Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 513. The name of our devotional today is We Honor God Daily. But first let us pray. Psalm 71 verse 8 says, I am always praising you all day long. I honor you. All day long, my Father, we honor you by remembering you, by praising you, by inviting you, by acknowledging you, by praying to you, by reading the word, by listening to praise and worship and setting our mind to think of you and to spend time with you, to abide with you, my Father. Thank you so much for the privilege of knowing you, for the privilege of serving you, my Father. Thank you for the blessing and the honor of listening to your voice, listening to your counsel, to your direction, my Father. Thank you, my Father, in the name of Jesus, for the peace that surpasses all understanding, my Father, that only Christians, only people, that believe in you, that believe in your son, that believe on the cross of Calvary, embrace the cross and embrace the blood, my father. Have that privilege, my father. They've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of your son's light. We are called peculiar people. Those people that nobody understands. They are peculiar to the world but to the people that are being saved. It is the power of God onto salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the one that saved me, the one that saved you, the one that has saved many, many millions of people that have declared Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This morning, as I was in prayer, I found a prayer book, devotional, notebook that I had and I recorded some entries from 2011. And at that time, I was very worried about my mother's salvation. I was very worried that I was I was having this great relationship with my father in heaven and that I knew that if something happened to me I would go to heaven and yet she was not having that relationship and I was not assured that she would go to heaven and I started praying really really hard and I just I wrote some entries in this book and today in the year 2024 I read back everything that I wrote I read back how I described my emotions and my confusion and my fear and my that feeling of oh my god Lord I cannot be saved and my mother is gonna go to hell type feeling and it was amazing to read back and to also read of the victory, of the victory of everything the Lord did to be able to help me get my mother into an assisted living facility, get my mother into a place where she was happy because she had an amputated leg and I couldn't uh, take care of her. Uh, I would have to go in the middle of the night to pick her up from the floor. She would self-medicate and all of those things. I went through those things and I thought at that time that I was going absolutely insane because of all the pressure, because of all the worries and all of the things that I had to go through because I was also forgiving her. I was also reconciling my emotional state and her salvation and everything that I was learning from Christ 
that I should forgive her and all of the things that I had gone through as a child. It was just a crazy time for me. Just totally, really uh, hectic and, and just um, a time where I was feeling a lot of depression. I was, I was going through um, also a romantic breakup with a relationship and um, besides everything else that I was living and experiencing with my mother, the Lord kept just showing up. The Lord kept telling me, I've got this. He kept providing for me. Uh, he would find the right people. He would just open doors after doors and everything have, has been recorded in this book and in other journals that I have from 2007 when I got saved. And um, these journals, I can't throw them away because my life story with God have been recorded in these books. And um, it was just so amazing to read back on what the Lord had done. And I honored the Lord ever since I got saved. Nobody told me, spend time with the Lord, put on the alarm clock an hour before you have to get up from work for work. Nobody told me that, but yet I had such a need to spend time with the Lord in, in private, in quiet, in isolation, him and I, so that I could get my head on straight, so that I could, I could think better. I had so much confusion in my mind and I needed to renew my mind with the Word of God and with the, the whole mercy and grace and, and, the, and, and the love of the Lord. I needed to feel that love. And um, today, 2024, many, many years later, I was able to read through these entries that I made and I was just, I was blown away by the fact that the Lord God is a good God and and when you take a step towards the Lord, He takes 10 steps t towards you. When we do one little thing to choose the Lord every single day, it is amazing. It, it will yield these amazing dividends. Like it just, the Lord just produces beautiful things and blesses us with His grace and with His personality and His character and His attributes. And, and we can really depend on Him and trust in Him because He is there and He's alive. This is not some hocus pocus thing, you know, this white magic thing that we think that, you know, that, that we are, you know, living a fantasy. I needed the Lord in 2011. I needed the Lord in 2007. I needed the Lord. I've always needed the Lord, but there have been times in my life where I was desperate for the Lord because I was alone and I needed someone to help me. I needed someone to, to cover me and to defend me and to provide for me. I, I needed assistance and I depended totally upon the Lord. And he has come through so many different times that I cannot begin to tell you the amount of testimonies that I have one after the other. I encourage you to get my book, The Girl with the Low Cut Dress. A lot of my testimony and a lot of the miracles that the Lord has done in my life, it is written in those pages of that book. This is not something that I am doing in advertising to make more money off you and for you to go out and buy books just to, you know, as an advertising ploy. This is something that is closely related to exactly what I'm telling you and that the proof is there. It is written in black and white and with total details of the things that God has done in my life. And he can do them in your life. And I just want to thank you, Lord, because you are truly the God of our salvation, my Father. And it is 
a miracle, my Father, how when we put our trust in you, how when we ask you for help and support, you are there. You are there, my Father. You will never leave us high and dry. You will never leave us, my Father, with our hands open, with no recourse, my God. Never. Lord God, you are so faithful and loving. You are so amazing with your children. And I give you praise, honor, and glory today and every day. We want to have a relationship that honors you, God. We want to have the relationship that Psalm 71, 8 says, I am always praising you all day, I, all day long. I honor you, my Lord, all day long. We want to honor you, my Father. And as you think about the nature of your relationship with God, remember this, you will always have some type of relationship with him. It could be a distant relationship, or it can be a very close relationship. And the relationship will be a result of your doing, a result of your decision. God will not be knocking on your door forcefully for to have a relationship with you. He is a gentleman and he will knock on the door of your heart very, very softly. And if you're not in tuned, you will miss it. You will miss him if you're not in tuned to the voice of God and to the promptings of God. Are you willing to place God first in your life? That is what it takes. That's all it takes. Putting God first, putting your trust in God, putting your trust in Jesus, reading the Bible, taking your family to church. There is so many benefits. There are so many benefits to taking your whole family to church. I can't even begin to describe. For children, for young adults, sports and God are essential for the formation and the shaping of their character. They need to know that there is a God in heaven that loves them unconditional. They need to know that they were not created by a random explosion. They need to know that their creation, that they were awaited for, that, that they are cherished and that they are celebrated, that God loves them unequivocally and unconditionally with an everlasting love and that there is something after this life, that there is everlasting life for them if they put their trust in Jesus. Are you willing to place God first in your life? That means to take your family to church. That means to speak about to speak to your family about God. That means to give a good testimony about God to everyone that you meet. Are you willing to welcome God's son into your heart? These are the basic steps for you to have an amazing relationship with God. If your answer is not yes to the, both of these questions, then you're probably not having a great relationship with God because those are the two questions that are essential. They are essential steps for you to have this faith-filled relationship that you abide and you linger and you spend time with God and you have this personal, intimate relationship where you hear His voice. That's all it takes. Thankfully, God is always available. He's always ready to forgive and he's waiting to hear from you now. The rest, of course, is up to you. You decide what type of relationship you want to have with God. The Holy Spirit testifies of Jesus. So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you speak about our Lord and really live to his honor. Many people who call themselves Christians don't really invest much time or energy following Jesus. Don't be like them. Instead, make certain that you follow Jesus every single day of your life. That will guarantee you a good life. It will guarantee you a, an intimate relationship with God. It is not the absence of trouble, the absence of trials and tribulations. On the contrary, 
but it will guarantee you that during the trials and tribulations in life, because life happens, it guarantees you that God will be with you every minute of every day, every step of the way. He will be with you during the flood and during the, the, the tornado. He will be with you in the fire. He will never leave you, abandon you, or forsake you. But remember, there will be trials and tribulations even if you're walking with God. So I encourage you to seek out a heavenly support seek out heavenly assistance supernatural assistance how can we survive this earth how can we survive this energy this journey and the chaotic life that we are living in this chaotic world without God I ask myself that question every single day how can other people do life without God I cannot imagine it my friend, I encourage you to seek God every single day, five minutes of your day, 10 minutes of your day. Set a time, set aside time for God. Set aside time to teach your family about God. You will see and you will reap incredible rewards. Thank you, my Father, for this word. Thank you, my Father, for this message. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light and play in the sunshine, dance in the rain. But most of all, I remind you to keep on smiling. You have a million reasons to be thankful. You have a million reasons to be, to be happy and joyful and to smile because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, God bless you. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.